Hi, my name is Sangha Lindsay. I'm a landscape architect here in North Vancouver. It's May 1st, and I'm sitting here on our edible green roof, um, right next to our raised vegetable bed here. And what you see here is a combination of an onion garlic bed and strawberries on the outside. Today I'm going to talk about how and where to plant strawberries. Now as you can see this bed was already established. We planted it last year so we should be expecting a good bumper crop this year. Some tips of where to place your strawberries. Uh, number one, a very sunny site as you can see where we are. Strawberries require at least six hours of direct sunlight a day in order to flower and fruit properly. I however do like to put some some of them in a semi-shaded area or for ornamental purposes in my hanging baskets in my garden beds you will get a lot less berries but like I said it's more for ornamentation and so I can spread my edible produce throughout the garden the other thing strawberries need is very uh, good drainage because strawberries do germinate or grow from a crown and if that crown is waterlogged or buried it will rot and your plant will die so they're a very shallow rooted plant. So when you do get your strawberries, what you want to look for is a day neutral type of cultivar. There's different kinds. There's ones that are the one shot deal that will only bloom and fruit in June. You will get your alpine strawberries that are tiny little berries sporadically uh, fruiting and flowering throughout the year. But most producers now have these day neutrals. You get a first flush of bloom in June, you get your berries June, July, and then throughout the rest of the season to about September, October, you'll get a sporadic uh, fruiting and flowering. So I like to use my day neutrals. This particular cultivar is called a TriStar, very vigorous. It's an old cultivar, very vigorous, almost bomb proof. Never let me down yet, so I recommend this cultivar. And what you'll find is um, two things that you can purchase in the nursery when you get your strawberries. One, they'll either be in a pot, or two, you'll find that you can buy them in packages of 10, and they will pretty much look like this plant here. Here's your crown, so you know what a crown looks like, where the foliage comes out of, and roots out of the bottom. So, perfectly good plant as long as you get it planted right away in moist soil it will take off now if you do have an established bed like this one here for example you can see that last year they did um, strawberries are what they call runner plants so what they will do is this is the mother plant here and these are what they call the babies and what happened is an actual stem shot out from the plant and at the end of the stem you had a little baby plantlet that formed, and I'll just dig it up just so you can see. So very much like what I just showed you, a little bit of foliage, your crown, your roots. So if you want to uh, increase your, your uh, amount of plants, in the following year, all you have to do is look for these runners, dig them up, and you can transplant them. So I'm just gonna go over to this bed and just show you exactly how you plant them. Like I said, you don't want to um, bury this crown too deep or it will rot. So basically you want to do it at the same soil level where my finger is here. So in this case, we're digging a very, very shallow hole. In this case, only eight, about an inch or so. Lightly covering so that the crown is just barely peaking above the soil grade. And that's it. You want to space your strawberries about uh, one foot apart and then that way as you can see in the other bed they will start to shoot out runners later on this season and you'll find that before you know it your whole bed area will sort of multiply two or three fold. The other way I, want to, I like to use strawberries is in containers and here's a ready-made example this is a strawberry planter that I actually did last year. So you can see it's the, the crowns are just starting to germinate right now. And here's one that's a little bit more advanced. 
these funky yellow and green containers perfect. And what you want to do here is look for a variety that's more dwarf. This is a more dwarf uh, cultivar because your crowns can get quite big and bulky in those holes. So look for the smaller cultivars that are good for container planting. I also love to use these containers as weights for our beehives. Uh, these covers here can sometimes blow off in the wind, so these make perfect counterweights for our beehive lids. Plus, we have instant pollinators. Once, once these uh, plants start to go in flowers, the bees are automatically on them, and we will get quite a little bumper crop out of this pot alone because we have our pollinators literally one foot away. So that's it. If you want to know anything more about where or when to plant strawberries, think about it now, for sure. That's when they're all coming out to ensure that you will get a harvest this year. One little tip though, if you want to, uh, I tend not to do it, but the other experts say that if you want to increase your, your yields, when you plant your strawberries the first year, you might want to consider taking all the flowers off and not letting them fruit their first year and then you'll get even a bigger crop the following year. By doing that, you're strengthening the plant. The plant is, is growing instead of producing, using its energy to produce flowers and fruit. My opinion, I find that we have more than enough strawberries. I like to have instant. And last year we planted them right away in the spring and we had tons of strawberries. And I did not find that my plants degraded any any less because I did not pull the flowers off the first year. So it's up to you but if you want any more information you can always visit my website at www.sangadesigns.com. Thanks for watching.